With Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness and endless cameos coming up, one of the biggest talking points from the trailers has been what's going on with Wanda Maximoff, aka Scarlet Witch. Where is her journey going to go next? And the more I started to think about it, Wanda has one of the most interesting and controversial stories in the MCU. Not controversial in a real-world, sad, everyone-argues sense, but more controversial in the sense that she's a fictional character whose intentions and morals are debated. Is she a villain? Is she a victim? Are her actions justified? Etc. And I think those questions will be explored much more in Multiverse of Madness. With all that in mind, today I wanted to take a look through the character's story and chronologically put together her character's journey to catch us all up in time for Mr. Doctor 2. So, with spoilers for all of her MCU appearances so far, except for Doctor Strange 2, obviously, Let's get into this. Wanda Maximoff was born in 1989 to Irena and Oleg Maximoff, along with a twin brother, Pietro, in the central European country of Sokovia. Unbeknownst to her or anyone around her, she's born with a super powerful energy known as Chaos Magic, making her the incarnation of a massive magical power potential being known as the Scarlet Witch. The powers at this point are so faint though that they are unnoticeable to Wanda and those around her and they're likely to just go away. Unless, you know, something crazy was to happen. Anyway, growing up in Sokovia, which is a country of political and military unrest and conflict isn't always the easiest or the most luxurious for the Maximoff family, but they love each other and make it work and find comfort and joy in watching classic American sitcoms together. For the same reasons that a lot of us love watching sitcoms. They're fun, easy to watch, take your mind off your problems, and show an albeit unrealistic but idealized perfect version of life. Easy and simple. And this is something that Wanda loves. However, one day at the age of 10, the first of an unfortunately very long list of tragic events happens to Wanda, as Sokovia's war-torn nature leads to bombings, and one day, while the family is watching an episode of The Dick Van Dyke Show, a shell obliterates their building, and both of Wanda's parents are killed. Her and her brother Pietro survive, though, and they manage to get underneath a bed to hide when a second shell hits the building, landing right in front of them. In a torturous tension, the two children lie there for two days, waiting at any moment for the bomb to go off and kill them, and for those two days, Wanda and Pietro stare at the words written on the side of the shell. Stark Industries. That'll leave an impression on you. Wanda manages to find a tiny sliver of comfort by watching the Dick Van Dyke show, which is still playing in the background, but yeah, horrible tragedy and trauma. Eventually, she and Pietro are rescued and they're put into an orphanage in Sokovia, in which at some point they interact with a child with a skin disease, possible nightcrawler or toad or other mutant hint here. Who knows? Anyway, as Wanda and Pietro grow up in the orphanage, they look into what exactly Stark Industries is and find it's a weapon manufacturing company run by billionaire Tony Stark, who, for obvious reasons, they now harbor a very deep hatred towards. As the years pass by, Tony Stark actually keeps popping up in the headlines a lot as he transitions away from weapons manufacturer to the superhero Iron Man, building a weaponized suit of armor to help create world peace and bring justice, which I'd imagine Wanda and Pietro find very ironic and probably brews more hatred within them, as the world hails this man as a hero who's bringing peace, while to them, he kills their parents in the midst of war. Stark also joins a newly formed group of superheroes known as the Avengers, who help to save the world from aliens. But again, Tony Stark is an absolute dirtbag to the Maximovs, and they organize and go to lots of protests against Tony Stark and America in general for being part of the war and chaos in their country, which, unbeknownst to them, gets the superhero, super spy, intelligence organization S.H.I.E.L.D. to start looking into them. And as a byproduct of that, the secret villainous cult inside of S.H.I.E.L.D., Hydra, also keeps their eyes on them. Hydra even behind the scenes secretly puts together some of these protests. Hydra in fact decides Sokovia would be a great place to set up base since there's so much conflict going on there, it would be easier to hide their nefarious doings there, including experiments on people with super powerful objects to create super soldiers for themselves. Hydra realizes Wanda and Pietro, among other things, want peace in their country, and so they send Hydra resident creepy guy List to give them a deal. We'll experiment on you and give you superpowers, and with those superpowers, then you can bring peace to your country. Even though Hydra definitely has other plans for them, that's the pitch he puts out there. Wanda isn't crazy about the idea, she wants peace, but this sounds a bit out there, but Pietro manages to convince her, and they join a few others to be experimented on by List and other Hydra Creepy Man, but this time Creepy Man with a monocle, Baron Von Strucker. Strucker and Hydra have come in possession of an Infinity Stone, the Mind Stone to be specific, one of the most powerful objects in the entire universe, and they expose the experimentees to it, with all of them dying before its power, with the exception of Wanda and Pietro. In fact, not only does it not kill them, but it awakens superpowers deep within them, which gives Pietro the power of super speed, and in Wanda, it releases the chaos magic within her. Not only does it give her access to it, but it helps develop and reinforce it, and while she certainly does not know the full extent of her power at this point, she now has access to chaos magic, which allows her to manipulate people's minds, create spells and force with red magic, telekinetic powers. Look, the powers are a tad vague, but you get the point. Red magic powers. She can now also become the Scarlet Witch that is known from mythical prophecies as a super powerful magic being who also apparently will destroy the world, but we'll get to more of that later. 
Obviously, this is a pretty crazy feeling and transformation, and Wanda watches the Brady Bunch afterwards to comfort herself a bit, going back to her safe space of sitcoms. Her and Pietro are kept by Hydra for a while, eventually getting a better grip over their powers, though it takes some time. And a little while later, Hydra has attracted the attention of the Avengers, Tony Stark's superhero team, who come to Sokovia to shut down the whole operation and take back that Infinity Stone. Upon hearing this, Wanda and Pietro are finally going to get their chance to take on the Avengers and their hated enemy, Tony Stark, so they get out of their cells and start using their newfound powers to attack the Avengers, which includes Wanda briefly taking out the Avenger Captain America, aka Steve Rogers, and finally, Wanda sees the man himself, Tony Stark. Instead of instantly going for a kill, Wanda decides to peer into his mind and gives him a vision of his worst fear, which turns out to be aliens invading Earth and killing all of his Avenger friends, and presumably you know, everyone else on Earth. And in this fear, there's the detail of him not being enough to stop it. Upon seeing this, Wanda returns to Pietro, who's like, isn't this the guy? Let's get him. But Wanda knows that with this fear inside of Stark, and with what she's just shown him, he will rip himself and his team apart from the inside, and they should just let him go and watch that unfold instead. Quick reminder here that if you're enjoying this video, drop a like, subscribe, hit the bell button, and comment your thoughts on Scarlet Witch's journey down below, and what you think is going to happen with her in Multiverse of Madness. Also, after the video, check out my podcast, The Poorly Planned Podcast. Movie talk, TV talk, it's a good time. Alright, back to the video. After this whole encounter, Wanda and Pietro head out to the Sokovian capital, where they haven't really been since their whole Hydra stint, and they stay there for a little while. Pietro steals for them and gives stuff to the Sokovian people, especially a woman he's trying to impress. The woman's brother then lets Pietro and Wanda know that Iron Man wants to meet with them, which the twins obviously find a bit strange. When they go to investigate though, they find that it is not Iron Man, but a sentient AI robot known as Ultron, who Tony Stark created to be a protector for the Earth out of his fear of alien invasion. And much as Wanda had predicted, it went horribly wrong. Ultron shares the goal of the Maximoffs of wanting to destroy the Avengers, and in the old Hydra base he's made lots of little baby Ultrons, aka Ultron bots, to help them with that. He also points out that Wanda specifically can tear the Avengers apart from the inside with her nifty mind powers. Wanda and Pietro explain their tragic backstory to Ultron and agree to team up with him, and the first stop on the trip is South Africa to get some fancy metal, vibranium, for Ultron to upgrade his body. When they get there, they get a couple of signs that Ultron might not be the most stable guy to team up with. Firstly, finding out that he killed Strucker, who I don't know if you could say they liked, but it's someone the twins knew who Ultron just brutally murdered. And he also cuts off this guy's arm for indirectly insulting him. Anyway, the Avengers turn up, and after some words are exchanged between them, a fight breaks out, in which Wanda manages to bewitch slash hex the minds of Captain America and two other Avengers, Thor and Black Widow. And she's about to get a fourth, Hawkeye, aka Clint Barton, but he's just a little faster than her and zaps her in the face with this arrow, delivering a one-liner that if she could hear it, she wouldn't really get the reference behind. I've done the whole mind control thing. Not a fan. Anyway, Pietro helps her out, and she gets her wits about her, and she manages to get into the mind of Bruce Banner, another Avenger who transforms into an enormous green rage monster, and she sets said rage monster loose on Johannesburg, which occupies Tony Stark while the other Avengers are still out of it. Wanda and Pietro get out of there and meet with Ultron in Seoul, where he's making a fancy new body for himself with that vibranium. He also puts the Mind Stone, which he's gotten possession of, in the body's head for even more power, and starts to transfer his consciousness. While this process is happening though, Wanda is able to get into Ultron's AI robot mind and see that he doesn't just want to kill the Avengers, he wants to kill everyone. Every person on Earth. Extinction. And yeah, her and Pietro aren't on board for that one, so they get the hell out of there. As they're leaving, they see the Avengers fighting Ultron in the city, and decide to join the Avengers side in order to help save innocent civilian lives who would otherwise be killed in the carnage. Wanda specifically helps to stop a train that was sent careening through the city, a bit of a first hero moment for her, and an unsteady truce is made between the twins and the Avengers since they realize they both have good intentions, or at the very least, the common intentions of not letting a robot kill everyone on Earth. Captain America is like, we're getting that vibranium body to Tony, and Wanda's like, how much you want to bet that Tony Stark's gonna screw this all up again? They fly back to New York to Avengers Tower, and that's precisely what's happening. Tony is trying a similar trick of uploading his AI Jarvis into this new body. Cap and the twins are like, you created a murder bot last time, stop it. Tony's like, no. And so there's a bit of a scuffle before Thor bursts in and super lightnings the body, which brings the body to life, creating vision. Wanda sees this android Paul Bettany AI mindstone being for the first time and is probably thinking, sexy, sexy, sexy. <laughs> but still, it's unclear if this is actually an ally or an enemy. Vision puts this to rest by lifting Thor's hammer, which can only be lifted by those worthy of Thor's otherworldly power. So, 
he's probably all right. The Avengers team, along with Wanda, Pietro, and Vision, now head back to Sokovia to stop Ultron. Plus, Wanda and Pietro get new suits, since they're at least for the moment members of a superhero team. Cap gives them a motivational speech on the way, and as soon as they get there, they start helping civilians get to safety. For example, with Wanda using her mind control to move people out of harm's way, while a battle with the many Ultron bots also begins. You may ask why Ultron went back to Sokovia? It's because he wants to destroy life on Earth by picking up the Sokovian capital and dropping it back on Earth really hard, creating what scientifically is known as a big kablamo. Anyway, the city starts flying into the sky, and for Wanda, who, in case you forgot, not too long ago gained magic-based superpowers and is now in her hometown flying through the air fighting a genocidal robot alongside her most hated enemies, plus in her mind this is somewhat her fault, everyone in her hometown and on Earth is gonna die because she helped out this robot, this is all a bit too overwhelming, and she has a bit of a breakdown. Hawkeye gives another motivational speech, giving Wanda probably some of the most encouragement she's heard in a long time, acknowledging that this whole situation is absurd, but he's still gonna fight for what's right, and if she goes out there and fights too, you are an Avenger. With these words spurring her on, Wanda gets her emotions under control and steps back into battle, going full badass mode and destroying several Ultron bots in the process. The battle continues, there's more fighting robots and evacuating citizens, the Avengers team up around the key that will drop the city, stopping a horde of Ultron bots, and Ultron is knocked on his ass, and Wanda volunteers to stay guarding the key while the others go back out to fight. Wanda does just that for a while, until suddenly she gets a horrible feeling, and through presumably a combination of her magic and sibling connection, she realizes that Pietro has been killed by Ultron. He was shot dead, protecting Hawkeye and a kid. In the rage and anguish of the moment, she unleashes a blast of chaos magic that vaporizes the Ultron bots around her, and heads away from the key to go find Ultron's body. In a metaphor for what he has just done to her, she rips out his robot heart in one of many moments from Wanda that are cool, kinda scary, and largely sad when you think about them. However, Wanda leaving the key means an Ultron bot was able to get to it, and so the city starts crashing down. Wanda starts crashing towards the Earth with it, but is actually saved by, guess who? Vision, who flies in and brings her to safety. The other Avengers manage to destroy the city before it hits the ground, and the day has been saved. Wanda now officially has found her new path in life. As Hawkeye said, she's an Avenger. She gets a brand new Avengers suit and joins the team of new Avengers, which looks a bit different from the old team, because some people went off to space and whatnot, and some people retired, but now it's her, Cap, Black Widow, Falcon, War Machine, and Vision. She also now has a place to live, the new Avengers HQ in New York. And although this is an improvement on some of her earlier living conditions, she's not doing great. I mean, her brother, basically the only person she had in the world, has died. She's in a new country with these new powers in this weird situation. She feels lonely, and in this loneliness, she once again finds comfort in sitcoms. The one person she's developed the most connection with isn't even really a person. It's Vision, and they start talking more, and he helps her get through this low point in her life. One day, they have quite an existential and powerful talk about death and love while watching Malcolm in the Middle, with Vision delivering the line, What is grief? If not love, persevering. And as their connection grows, they start to develop feelings for each other, and start to kind of vaguely date at this point. This new Avengers team now goes on missions around the world over the next year or so, including stopping this giant Ultron-ish robot that Hydra made. One mission they go on is to track down the supervillain Crossbones in Lagos, Nigeria. And after a bit of a fun action scene with Wanda using her powers to help the team against some of Crossbones' goons, Crossbones detonates a suicide vest in front of Captain America. In an effort to save him, Wanda envelops the explosion in her magic and tries to move it away as much as she can, but in the process, she accidentally detonates the explosion next to a building, killing innocent civilians. Obviously, this is more horrible guilt and grief for Wanda, who is devastated, and she spends the next month or so feeling awful and guilt-ridden. She is comforted by members of the team, including Steve, aka Cap, who tries to help her come to terms with what happened, but the problems are only starting as this government guy, General Ross, shows up and presents the team with the Sokovia Accords, basically a way for the government to keep superheroes in check because of all the damage they've been causing. This presentation includes him showing footage of Sokovia being destroyed, which makes Wanda feel even worse. The team is divided on these accords, with about half led by Tony wanting to sign, and the other half led by Cap wanting to remain free agents. Tony brings up a specific innocent person who died in Sokovia and tells a story, causing more guilt in Wanda, but Wanda doesn't really want to sign these accords. I would say she's already been through a lot, has a natural distrust of authority and the government, and probably a little lingering distrust of Tony Stark, and she's not been looked at very favorably by the government or the public, and there are the points that Cap brings up. She's got a lot of thoughts and emotions going on right now. So she stays at Avengers HQ, while the other heroes are out getting up to Civil War stuff. 
She has a cute and meaningful paprika conversation with Vision over some cooking about the way people fear her and their powers and whatnot, but when she tries to leave, she discovers that Tony has asked Vision to keep her in the Avengers complex, for her safety and also probably other people's as well. Which also doesn't sit very well with Wanda and makes her feel more like a monster that needs to be caged away. One night though, Hawkeye shows up to break her out because teams amongst the Avengers are really starting to form now over these accords. Tony and Cap are in this big thing over Cap's old friend Bucky. It's a whole thing, but basically Hawkeye's come to get her for Team Cap, which he is able to convince her to do by giving her another motivational speech that gets her fired up to go. I mean, speech. Sentence. He says some helpful stuff. Vision tries to stop them from leaving, but after a brief and not very competitive fight with Hawkeye, he is subdued by Wanda. Since her powers come from the Mind Stone, which is in Vision's head, she's able to restrain him. He tells her that people will always fear her if she does this, and she's like, well, you know what, they're gonna fear me anyway. I can only control my own fear. I'm done hiding out here. She then, let's say, inconveniences him for long enough for them to get away. On their way to Germany, Hawkeye and Wanda also pick up another superhero, Scott Lang, and on the way, Hawkeye explains the whole situation. They're meeting Team Cap at an airport in Germany, and then flying to Siberia to stop a bunch of evil super soldiers. Cool. Team Cap does meet up, but Team Iron Man is there to stop them, and a big superhero on superhero battle begins, which Wanda participates in by dropping cars on Tony Stark, definitely giving Black Widow a concussion and or a broken back, saving Bucky from another superhero, Black Panther, and yeah, generally helping her team out. Realistically, she probably could have done a lot more damage, but considering they are still heroes and teammates, she can't just unleash the Scarlet Witch power as she does later. And they all sort of hold back a bit so no one gets seriously hurt. You're pulling your punches. She also uses her powers to hold up some rubble so Cap and Bucky can get away before getting blasted with War Machine's sonic blast thing. Cap and Bucky are the only ones on Team Cap who get away, and now that the battle is cooling down, Vision flies over to Wanda and is like, this is awful, I'm sorry, let's never do this again. And she agrees. Also remember what I said about no one getting hurt? Well, while distracted with his feelings for Wanda, Vision accidentally shoots down War Machine, aka Rhodey, instead of Falcon. Which, you know, isn't great. But also, would it have been fine if Falcon got shot out of the sky and, like, died? Anyway. After this battle, the rest of Team Cap, including Wanda, is imprisoned in the Raft prison out in the ocean, and Wanda, as usual, isn't given the nicest treatment, being locked up in a straitjacket with either a shock collar or maybe some kind of power dampener around her neck. Anyway, she's stuck in this not very comfortable position for a while until eventually Cap shows up, who's now handled his business, and frees the team. Wanda now decides, you know what? This life is not for me. I'm gonna go live with Vision, who I love, in Scotland, in peace. He'll disguise himself as a human. I'm technically wanted for all the Sokovia Accords stuff, so we'll keep a low profile. Let's just hide out and live our lives. Let's do this. And Wanda and Vision do actually get to live a pretty nice, peaceful, romantic life in Scotland for about two years. One of the nicer points of Wanda's journey, to be honest. Vision even purchases a bit of land in Westview, New Jersey for them to move to at some point and live at in the future. They're really in love and getting serious about spending their lives together. However, as we know with Wanda, tragedy is always waiting around the corner for her, and the peaceful happy life is interrupted when Vision's Mind Stone starts acting up a bit. He starts feeling like it's warning him of something. Wanda says, okay, I guess we can go back to Avengers HQ just to see what's up, have someone check it out. Vision's not crazy about the idea, he just wants to be with Wanda and keep their life, but all of that is interrupted when they see a news report that aliens have come to Earth, which Vision suspects is what the Mind Stone is warning him about. And at that moment, they're attacked by aliens who are in fact there for the Mind Stone. Wanda does her best to defend an injured Vision, but they're ultimately on the losing side of the battle until Cap, Black Widow, and Falcon show up to help them out. They take them back to Avengers HQ. On the way, they get caught up on the situation. This purple alien titan Thanos is coming to get all six Infinity Stones, so he can snap half the universe's population out of existence. And one of those stones is in fact in the middle of Vision's forehead. When they get to Avengers HQ, the idea of destroying the stone is brought up, which only Wanda would be able to do given that her powers come from the Mind Stone. However, it could and probably would kill Vision, and Wanda's like, absolutely not. I've already gone through enough. I'm not gonna murder the love of my life and basically the only person in the world I trust and care about. Also, even without having gone through enough. Murdering your husband, basically, you know, not ideal. So the Avengers think, okay, we can go to the home country of that hero Black Panther, Wakanda, because they have super advanced tech and maybe his sister Shuri can remove the stone safely from Vision's head and then Wanda can destroy it. They do just that and the stone removal process begins, but Thanos' enormous alien army then arrives to attack. The other Avengers, along with the Wakandan army, go to battle while Wanda stays with Vision. However, as she sees how tough the battle is, Wanda decides enough is enough and joins the fray, stopping these two giant machines with her powers. Her, Black Widow, and Okoye, a Wakandan warrior, fight one of Thanos' top henchman, Proxima Midnight, also one of the aliens that attacked her in Vision earlier, and take her out in emphatic fashion. 
The battle continues, and Wanda is eventually able to find Vision, who had his own battle with one of Thanos' henchmen. The rest of the group comes to their location, and just then, Thanos himself arrives through a portal, fresh off of defeating the other heroes on another planet. He has all five other Infinity Stones, and now he's just missing Visions. The team does their best to hold him back, but he's just too powerful. And so Wanda has to make the truly heartbreaking decision to destroy the stone in Vision's head, with Vision encouraging her to do so. It would save trillions of lives, at least. They call back to a line they said to each other earlier, I just feel you. I just feel you. And Wanda starts the process of killing Vision by destroying the stone. At the same time, she holds off Thanos for as long as she can, which is a pretty good indicator of how powerful Wanda actually is. Destroying an Infinity Stone and holding off Thanos with five other Infinity Stones at the same time, while dealing with the emotions of killing the love of her life. Vision manages to get out the words, I love you, and suddenly, the stone explodes. Vision is dead, but the day is saved. Wanda thinks this is bad enough and exchanges some words with Thanos, but before she can understand what's happening, Thanos uses one of his other stones to reverse time around Vision, bringing him and the stone back to life. And then he pulls the stone very unceremoniously from his skull, killing him again. Meaning Wanda had to watch the love of her life die in front of her twice in two minutes, once at her own hands. And now Thanos has all six stones, and after a bit of a blunder from Thor, he's able to snap half the population of the universe out of existence. This includes Wanda, and honestly, after the trauma and tragedy she's experienced in the last few years, but especially in the last 10 minutes, she seems almost relieved to be going, as if finally it's over. However, from Wanda's perspective, this is basically a blink and then she's already back, in the Wakandan forest. She is presumably greeted by Doctor Strange, a magical superhero, the Sorcerer Supreme actually, coming through a portal telling her it's five years later, the remaining Avengers brought everyone back to life, and now are facing Thanos at Avengers HQ and need all the help they can get. So she, along with every superhero in the universe pretty much, and a bunch of armies, travel through portals to Avengers HQ to back up the remaining Avengers and fight off Thanos and his massive army again. Which includes this moment. Symbol. At some point in this battle, Wanda is actually able to get in front of Thanos, who remember, for her, murdered Vision just about 15 minutes ago, and she confronts him about how he took everything from her. He tells her that he doesn't even know who she is, which, although she doesn't know it, is actually true for this version of the character, not even just trash talk, but she doesn't care. After a brief scuffle, she picks him up in the air and starts to brutally tear him apart, starting with his armor, but presumably would have kept going to his limbs and flesh if she hadn't been stopped, which again shows Wanda's power and also the deep, violent rage built on pain that's inside her, that we may be seeing more of soon. Anyway, Thanos calls in a massive airstrike that's able to temporarily stop her, and the battle continues, with Wanda holding back a giant Thanos army slug leviathan, and also helping out teenager Peter Parker, aka Spider-Man, along with all the other female Avengers, who gather all together for one moment of the battle. The battle wears on, but eventually, Tony Stark is able to get a hold of all six Infinity Stones himself, and he snaps his fingers to wipe all of Thanos' army out of existence. The battle is won. This whole Thanos Infinity War is over, and Tony Stark is killed in the process. Even Wanda, who hated Tony Stark more than anything in the world for a large part of her life, recognizes the heroic sacrifice he made and kneels in his honor alongside everyone else on the battlefield. That was a lot of excitement, but now time slows down a bit, and once again, Wanda is full of pain and woe. Again, having lost someone very, very close to her. She attends Tony Stark's funeral, and at it, Hawkeye, as you'll remember, one of the team members she's closer to, shares a nice moment with her, and they reflect on losing loved ones, as his good friend Black Widow had also died in the ordeal against Thanos. After this, Wanda is pardoned for her Sokovia Accords violations, since, you know, she saved the universe. Around three weeks later, Wanda's thinking, the least I can have now is a funeral for Vision, to honor him and his sacrifice and what he meant to me. She goes to a facility belonging to S.W.O.R.D., an organization that deals with space superhero stuff, and I guess superhero stuff in general, and finds to her horror Vision's body being cut up for research, since he is technically an android and is more or less just machinery and a resource in S.W.O.R.D.'s eyes. It doesn't help that S.W.O.R.D.'s leader is also a huge douchebag, and doesn't even let Wanda get any real closure with Vision, which again, is heartbreaking for her. In her pain, she drives out to Westview, New Jersey, where Vision had purchased that plot of land for them to live on, and after everything she's been through, the death of her parents, being experimented on, the death of her brother, the destruction of her city, the guilt of accidentally killing people, being hated and feared and locked up, having to kill the love of her life and then having to watch him die again, then dying herself and coming back, and after all that, not even being able to properly say goodbye to Vision, her mind and heart has had enough. She can't hold in her grief and anger and pain anymore, and in a moment of breakdown and emotional 
emotional release, she inadvertently unleashes tons of the chaos magic inside her, which envelops the town of Westview and creates a new reality for her, putting her in a 1950s sitcom like the ones that she loved so much as a child. With sitcoms being one of the few things that have comforted her throughout her life, this is the way her mind and heart and powers are combining to try to protect her from more pain and loss and suffering and to deal with everything that's happened. And although she initially doesn't do it intentionally, she now is in this much nicer, perfect, ideal reality for herself. And her chaos magic also creates a version of vision for her as well. And now Wanda can live in this new reality. Now, while deep down, she probably knows somewhere that this is wrong, and she shouldn't be using her powers for this, and she is taking control of other people's lives, a whole town's worth, in fact, it's hard for her to see that when she's finally gotten what she's always wanted. A carefree, hijink-filled sitcom world with her husband, where all the problems are silly and solvable, and everything ends up okay in the end. And so she does just that, living in this world of her creation, in which she controls everyone and everything in the town, in a sense. Although it's kind of subconscious, kind of not, like she knows what she's doing, but she's not fully letting herself realize the extent of it. It's something like that. Anyway, the peaceful sitcom life kicks off. There are lots of tropes like the classic nosy neighbor, Agnes in this case. There are fun gags. Yes, it isn't a perfect system. Occasionally, the reality starts breaking a little and people start asking questions or acting out of character or weird stuff happens, but it's pretty good for now. The show, reality, transitions to the 1960s next with a fun magic show episode. However, now Wanda starts noticing some more strange stuff that's not supposed to be there. A drone from S.W.O.R.D. in color, voices coming over the radio asking if she can hear them, blood in color, this weird beekeeper sword guy. But again, just move past it. Let's keep having a sitcom, fun, peaceful life. Wanda also befriends a woman in the town named Geraldine, and the show transitions to a 70s sitcom. This new version of Vision is starting to notice some of this weird stuff going on though. But anyway, Wanda ends up pregnant which in this weird sitcom magic reality progresses very quickly, and within about 10 minutes, she ends up giving birth to twin boys, Billy and Tommy. However, after this, Geraldine starts talking about Ultron and Pietro's death, and Wanda's like, nope, that is not the vibe in here. Also, you have a sword symbol on you? Get the hell out. Vision's like, hey, what's up? And for a second, Wanda sees him as corpse vision. Not a great sign for Wanda's mental health. Vision's like, you know, how about we leave Westview? And Wanda's like, nope, I like it here. Here's good. The reality then transitions to the 80s, where Wanda discovers she can't control her kids with her powers, probably because they came from her and are powered in their own way, but more weird stuff keeps happening, and Vision is getting more and more weird and suspicious. Because of magic and sitcoms, Tommy and Billy also start aging at super accelerated rates. They find a dog that they bring home that they name Sparky, and Wanda gives them a little pep talk about having disagreements and how they'll always be brothers. However, another sword drone invades her reality, and now Wanda's sick of it. So she drags it out of Westview and confronts Sword, who have gathered outside the town and have been trying to reach her since she kind of has taken a whole town hostage. Geraldine, whose real name is Monica Rambeau, tries to reason with her, but Wanda's like, eh, no thank you, stay out of my reality. Sparky the dog is found dead, which leads to Wanda giving a pep talk to the kids about death and how you can't reverse it. Poignant. And Vision's like, hey, I've been asking around town and you're controlling this reality. What the hell's happening here? This is not right. They get into a bit of a fight, but just then the doorbell rings and look who it is. It's her brother Pietro. Except a different version from another film trilogy that was like... 50% good, maybe? Anyway, he's now hanging out with the family, and the reality transitions to a 90s-style sitcom for a Halloween episode in which Wanda and Vision are a Sokovian fortune teller and a Mexican wrestler. Vision is still suspicious, so he goes off to do his own thing, and Wanda takes the boys trick-or-treating with Pietro, during which they start to manifest their own powers of super speed and telekinetic Wanda-style abilities. When Wanda has a second, she's like, Hey, how are you here? Why do you look different? What's happening right now? And Pietro counters with some vague explanations and his own questions about this reality that Wanda's built. I don't know, something's kind of off about him. And during all this, she also has another corpse flashback moment. Wanda suddenly hears Vision is in mortal danger, so to save him, Wanda uses her powers to expand her hex reality around Westview. The reality now moves to a 2000s modern family style, but stuff is starting to come apart now. Reality is glitching pretty often, and Wanda's just not in great shape mentally. Vision's off somewhere, Agnes is taking care of the kids, and Wanda's having a bit of an internal crisis, which is manifesting itself in her reality. Monica shows up back in the town to talk to Wanda about S.W.O.R.D. and all that's happening, but Wanda, even though deep down she does like or trust Monica a bit, is like, I'm done with all this. Time to get rid of you with my powers again. But Monica has gained her own superpowers because she went through the hex. She wants to help Wanda get through this whole situation. Then Agnes shows up and is like, hey, come with me. Your kids are down here in my basement. And Wanda goes down there to find it's a secret mythical witch hideout. Big twist, turns out it was Agatha all along. Agnes is actually the witch Agatha Harkness, who has been hanging around trying to figure out how Wanda pulled off this crazy hex spell changing reality over a whole town. She sent Pietro, who is actually Ralph Boner, boner. 
<laughs> she killed Sparky. She did a bunch of stuff. It was Agatha all along. There was a whole theme song. Anyway, Wanda's desperate to get her kids back, so she agrees to look through her memories with Agatha to try and find the answer to how she created this reality. Which, through all this reality manipulation and pain and grief and whatnot, she actually doesn't know consciously, in case I hadn't made that clear. Also in her creepy basement, Agatha has the Darkhold, this powerful magic book that's been around the MCU quite a bit. Whether all this stuff is canonical anymore, who knows? Also in her creepy basement, she's put runes all around, which stop Wanda from using her powers. Wanda will note that down for later. Anyway, after that trip down memory lane and realizing it was her anger and despair that created all this, Wanda gets outside to find Agatha holding her kids hostage. Agatha tells Wanda she's the mythical, super powerful, chaos, magic being known as the Scarlet Witch with the power to create reality, more powerful than the Sorcerer Supreme, guess we'll find out soon, and she is also destined to destroy the world. I guess we'll also find out about that soon. Wanda doesn't have much time to take this in and starts fighting her, but soon realizes that Agatha is trying to steal all of her magic away from her so she can have that unbelievable power. She tries to cut Wanda a deal, she'll let her stay in Westview if she gives over the power, and actually fix Westview in this whole hex reality so it isn't always glitching, but Wanda keeps fighting. During this battle, a surprise guest appears. It's Vision, but he's white Vision now. Kind of strange. And yeah, he's bad. He's on Sword's side. Basically, this is Vision's original body that Sword reprogrammed and sent in to deal with the situation. Wanda's Vision shows up, and those two go off to fight and probably philosophize together. Anyway, the fight continues, with at one point some of the town's residents being freed from Wanda's spell, and they start begging her to free them from this horrible forced sitcom reality. Wanda is obviously distressed by this and accidentally chokes them with her magic in despair. Out of guilt and realizing the extent of the bad stuff she's done here, Wanda starts ripping down her hex reality and freeing the people of the town, but she realizes that that will also kill her vision and her kids, so she stops and the battle continues. The fighting ramps up, now Sword has also managed to get in, and Monica, Vision, Billy, and Tommy join the fight as well while Wanda takes on Agatha in the sky. Finally, Wanda has come up with a plan to stop Agatha. She'll act like she's willing to give her all her magic, while secretly putting giant runes up on the walls of the Hex, stopping Agatha's power and giving Wanda the upper hand. This plays out, Agatha thinks she's won, and she's like, haha, and by the way, your Hex reality sucks, I'm not gonna fix it, even though I said I would, and you can keep living here. Haha, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a villain. But whoops, Wanda tricked her. And now she transforms into the Scarlet Witch, with a way cooler costume than the one she had before. Agatha pleads with Wanda, she's like, you are so unbelievably powerful right now. You need me, you don't know how to handle this without me. And Wanda's like, nah, I think I'm okay. You're gonna be stuck as the nosy neighbor now. A fate worse than death, one could argue. Anyway, having seen the error in her ways, which there's a good debate here on whether Wanda is a hero or a villain by the end of this. I mean, she did hold a whole town hostage, but it was kind of unintentional and through raw pain, emotion, and chaos magic, you know, it's complicated. I did a poll on the pod channel. I don't know. Anyway, she now sees the error in her ways and realizes she has to get rid of the hex and the sitcom reality, which also means, once again, saying goodbye to the people that she loves, her kids and Vision, again. Wanda and Vision put the kids to bed together, and she shares a final moment with Vision. Though this one, while still sad, is much more hopeful than the last time they said goodbye. She tells her Hex Vision that he is a combination of the Mind Stone and her love for him, and Vision points out that they've said goodbye before, they'll see each other again. That other Vision, by the way, is still out there, just for the record. But, while sad, at least this goodbye feels like it has a sense of closure to it that Wanda didn't get last time. And with that, Vision and the Hex disappear. Wanda walks out of the town, past townsfolk who understandably are not happy with her, but Monica Rambeau is there and she understands her pain and what she's had to sacrifice to end this whole situation. Wanda's like, I need to go figure out who and what I am and what I'm gonna do. I've got all this power, all this emotion. I need some time to think. Also, I'm like super wanted now again, so best to stay off the radar for a bit. So she grabs the Darkhold from Agatha's place and heads off to a secluded cabin in the middle of nowhere to gain a better understanding and mastery of her powers and figure herself out a bit more. She learns how to create either an illusion of herself or like another avatar for herself. And one day as she's floating and reading the Darkhold, she hears her children calling to her from somewhere. Her mind, the multiverse, somewhere. And that is where Wanda Maximoff's journey up to this point ends and it's from that point that we'll meet her in a few weeks in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. And there you have it, another MCU character chronology, Wanda Maximoff's MCU journey, so far. I knew she was a tragic character before this, but I didn't realize how much pain and suffering she'd gone through before putting all of this together like this. She has had a tough time in the MCU, more so than pretty much any other major character. And it doesn't look like that's gonna end in Multiverse of Madness. I mean, it looks like she may be going full villain at this point, might kill everyone, who knows. Regardless, now you're caught up, hope you enjoyed it.
So that was Wanda Maximoff, aka the Scarlet Witch's MCU journey in chronological order. Also shout out to the MCU wiki that obviously I haven't just taken from word for word, but definitely helped clear up some points for this video and my previous chronologies as well. Anyway, what do you think of her journey? Do you find her to be a sympathetic character, an inspiring one, a villainous one, one who made mistakes that are understandable, one that is irredeemable? Whatever it is, let me know. And where do you think her character is going to go in Multiverse of Madness? Let me know in the comments down below. While you're at it, be sure to like this video, check out my Instagram and Twitter at BHL underscore Hudson, my TikTok at BHL Hudson, my Letterboxd at Real BHL Hudson, check out this podcast that I do with a friend of mine where we talk about movies, TV shows, a bunch of nonsense, it's called the Poorly Planned Podcast, and subscribe for more videos like the one you just watched. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.